All right, good afternoon, everybody. We're gonna do a quick video. Uh, well, probably not too quick, but at first I need to let everybody know that I'm jumping on over here on how to create the ES Futures Blueprints that I put out every night. Um, they're really easy, but you do have to have an understanding of supply and demand. So again, all this stuff is on my charts and it's, you know, I love proof of concept. I remember when I started this journey a long time ago, one thing that drove me crazy were the people who like trade with high insight. You know, there's a lot of furus out there. Furus are people who basically disguise everything. It's like, they're never wrong, right? They're just never wrong. And so they're really good at reading charts from the left to the right, but they're not very good at actually telling you where price is going to go on the right-hand side. So for me, an advanced trader can actually tell you, hey, this is where we're headed to. If this, then that, and then you know, furus are really good at saying, okay, so, you know, price was here and then it went here and this, this happened here. And, you know, the question is like, did you take the trade? Right? So they never have that evidence. So it's, it's really easy to say in high insight. So what I want to teach you guys tonight is how to do these charts, how to predict where price is going. So just hang out with me for a second while I send out this alert and let our uh, traders know here in the room that I am live. So just one second here. And yes, I know my keyboard is really loud, right? Everybody gets that. I got the, like this gamer keyboard and it, you know, it is obnoxious, but <laughs> I like it. Uh, please join me on YouTube to discuss how to So how did everybody do today? I hope you did well. I thought today was kind of, it was weird. It was a really weird vibe in the market today. Um, I felt like you really had to make sure you were in the right names. And I feel like the right names felt like they were too extended to be in the names. Um, and the names that I picked, like, you know, where, where I had more of my position money was like in Google, right? And it just like literally went sideways. So I added to it, it did go up, but all day I just saw it like sit there and suck crow. Now I bought, I, I bought, you know, a lot of time, but you know, you would imagine on a day like this, we would have actually seen a little bit more um, than um, what we saw. So anyways, just sent out that alert. I want to make sure everybody comes over here. So just give me a few minutes. So we'll talk about, so this is what you see typically when you guys come over. So I'm going to make a lot of people happy tonight. We're going to be using the H right? So right here, uh, whereas I was using the Z23 because the Z23 is good until Friday. And uh, on the first day of the gap up, you know, I just chose to, to stick with this. I'm kind of superstitious, if you will. Um, but this was today, and this is the kind of stuff I want to show you. So you guys know this. I said this out to you. Um, we, we look to go long at the green box, and we look to go short at this box. Now, I personally went short here. I also went long here. But the problem that I had today, and I'm sure a lot of you deal with this as well, is like I only took a couple points here because we were coming underneath the cloud. Uh, and then it came back down, and then I got long again and then I got long here and then I got out and then I got long here again and I got out you know right here and really at the end of the day you guys know the process says go long here place your stop this is more of a set and forget and the idea is to be able to take this trade all the way to the targets now a lot of people have a really hard time with that and I get that so do I and I'm not going to sit up here and bullshit you and tell you that I can do this every single day. Now, I can give you the most amazing charts and I can show you proof of concept before and after. But it's really important that you understand that I am not perfect and I'm not up here telling you that I'm trading from this green box to this box. So don't feel like if you're having a hard time, I get it. We're all it doesn't matter how long you've been trading again. Be transparent, be real with yourself. This stuff's not easy, but I do make it easier by at least showing you how we can do this, how we can put these charts together, and hopefully with a little bit of confidence, right? You know, I know that all the members here at Simpler Trading, you guys see this like day in, day out. And I always say like, 
you are going to be desensitized by the things that I am presenting to you. At first, you know, new traders are like, wow, it went right into your level. And wow, the trendy turns worked. You know, these are the trendy turns. That's when you get long. And right up here, this is where the trendy turn happened. And, and they work really, really well. And again, indicators are cool. They're just a convenience. All right. I'm going to show you how to find these levels without any indicators. The indicators are just convenience. And as you get better and better, you just don't want to spend all your time charting. You know, I just want to quickly find my levels and I want to trade off of them. So that's what indicators are all about. I just want to make sure I'm very, very clear with that. Okay, so let's go over here and we'll start with uh, tonight. And I'll show you what I typically do every time I come in. And that is, I work with a lot of different time frames. But my go-to in most cases from an intraday perspective is that I'm going to a two hour chart. Now it could be a four hour, it could be a, a, a three hour, it really does not matter, okay? Now what you're gonna see here is a lot of lines, okay? You're gonna see a lot of lines because of all the past stuff that we do. And what I could do is I could just come in here and I'm actually, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clear the drawing set and completely cleared up so I could show you how to do each one of these lines, okay? Now, let's talk about supply and demand. What I'm looking for is I'm always paying attention to my larger time frames. like where are we? In this case, we, because of the rollover, we gapped up into supply and we had some targets here. We had the 25, the 50, the 75, and if you watch my Sunday video, then you guys would know, right, that these are the targets that I gave you. So here we are at 46.99. And matter of fact, if you followed on those SPX trades, you were able to go ahead and trim uh, over 100% this, uh, this afternoon. And give me one second here. But I'm basing it off of the ES futures chart here, okay? So again, I'm just looking at the point difference between the SPX. I'm looking at what I want the ES to do, and then I'm just picking my numbers from there, okay? But on here, I got to get a bigger picture. And if you guys don't know how to do this with your charts and you use Thinkorswim, please watch my video. It's a really quick video. It's here on YouTube. It's like five minutes long, maybe three. Um, and it shows you how to set this up. And this is by far, and I get that you could do a flexible grid and look at all this stuff at the same time. But I just, I feel like when you're looking at too many things, you, you pause and I like to execute. So I don't want to think too much. So I just kind of hit this and see how that happens. And one thing that you'll notice is that down here, they're all labeled something different. So you have different levels on each chart. Okay, so this is a weekly. These are weekly levels. So this is for my traders who like to be in trades for more than five minutes. Okay, and then we move over here. This is for traders that like to be in the trade a little bit longer, one to three days or so. Uh, we base it off of here, but I'm getting levels from all of these different charts that I'm showing you and I'm putting them over here. Now my indicators are identifying supply and demand. All right. So they are a playing field of supply and demand. And the reason why I'm telling you all this is because sometimes I'll put my levels on here very quickly and you might be like, well, why is he doing that? And again, these are identifying supply and demand and they work really well. Anytime price comes down to one of these levels, I'm looking to go long off of here. If price were to come down to here and we get a bigger move back, like say Jerome says something tomorrow and something goes you know, nuts to the downside, I'm going to be buying right here when everybody else is fearful. Okay. So again, these levels are really, really important to me. Now, the first thing that I do going into tonight and or tomorrow is what I call liquidity chop. And the way that we do that is you could just click the little wheel on your mouse and we're gonna come over here to the uh, dollar sign. And what this does is give you a, and we can put this anywhere. Let's just put two up. We'll put one right there. We're gonna click on it, right click, edit properties. Okay, and don't worry if you don't get it right away, you can pause my stuff and listen again. We're gonna go in here and put a dash, okay, just like that. And we are going to, you're welcome. You're wel welcome. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to come over here and listen to me. All right. So we're going to do, I do LIQ <clears throat> liquidity, and then I just put in here chop. Okay. Liquidity chop. And actually, let's go ahead and make these all capital here. All right. And then we want to hit this right here to say show on the right. 
And if you want, we could turn the left extension on. What that means is that this line here is going to go all the way across my screen. Okay. So again, I named it. I went ahead and say show name on the right. All that means is it's going to say liquidity chop over here. And then I, my style is dotted lines. And then you can make this as wide as you want. I don't want it too wide. I'll just put two. Now watch what happens. When I do that, it's right there. Now, in order to duplicate a drawing on your Thinkorswim, you simply click on it and then we click the space bar and then you drag it down. Now we got two. So I always want two of these. All right. And what I'm looking for, all right, and I'm going to open this thing up so you really understand here. We identify inside and up and inside and down formations. Okay. Now my indicators identify all this stuff for me very quickly. So I don't really, I teach you how to do this, but I'm also showing you how to manually find these. Okay. Just in case you haven't made enough money yet, or you're thinking about buying the indicators, I want to show you how to do this stuff first and build yourself up, get you there. And if you want the convenience, you're more than happy to, to get them. Okay. Now liquidity chop. My inside and up formation is here. So for this, this is what we call a demand zone. Not all demand zones are created equal. Okay. And the reason why I say that, if we go to a whiteboard, let's just say that this is an inside and up. Let's say this is a new inside and up. And let's say that this is an inside and up. As you can see, one is bigger than the others. And just like anything else in life, the bigger candles just mean more volume. But in trading, what it means is that price is left here so quickly that typically you have an imbalance here. And when we have imbalances in the market and we run out of buyers, we call that demand, right? So we remember where traders want to buy and you could tell if they want to buy because the candles come out of here just like ripping and roaring. Well, we identify those demand zones, okay? Now we're not going to go into how I, you know, always put a box around this. Again, you can watch some of my videos, okay? Just to kind of save us some time. But this is the inside and out formation. This is a demand zone. Let's go ahead and place two lines on the front side and the back side, okay? Now, you don't want to try to be perfect. Like there's all these different videos out there of people saying, hey, this is the way I do it. And it's cool. I love that there's supply and demand traders out there. But one thing that I learned is you want a playing field. You want a playing field. You don't want to try to be exact. Like who cares about being exact nowadays? Like you're just going to get stopped out too easy. So this is a playing field. And remember what I said, the trendy edges are playing fields of supply and demand. This is what we call our future edges. These are our edges for tomorrow. They're identifying supply and demand. Okay. So again, this is a demand zone. So let's just go ahead and make this green. I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to select a green that looks right, just like that. All right, so now we have a demand zone. Now, a lot of people ask me, hey, John, how do you get those targets? Again, push the wheel on your mouse. I'm going to freeze my frame. See this thing right here? That's what I'm selecting. So once I do that, this is called the Fibonacci arc. Now for me, I color coded my Fibonacci arc to represent that of a target. Like, you know, if you're going out and you're shooting a bow and arrow, these are the actual colors. So if yours doesn't look like this and you like mine and you want it to look like mine, simply right click on the arc, go to edit properties, and then come in here and just color them just like this. And again, you could freeze this and this is going to help you out, okay? Let's go ahead and do that. And remember, if I want to duplicate this, I click on it and you see how it turns blue. Now I hit my space bar. I just created a new one. So we are going to have one for the downside, just like that. Okay. And then we're going to find a target up here. So don't worry. So let's just get this guy out of the way for right now. Let's find where liquidity chop is going to be. Now notice that I have different levels on here. Okay. Now I'm going to find, I'm just going to take this and see this little red line up here. This is actually a quant pivot. This is one of John Carter's um, indicators that I really like far as like targets are concerned. Now I'm not always going to use a quant pivot, but remember what I told you? 
it's all about convenience. I know that these levels work really well. So I'm going to take my first liquidity chop and actually put it right here. Now the idea is what I'm thinking in my head when I do these is that price is going to pop up into this level and then reject. Now we have traders that, that short off of this when we're you know below it. We have traders that just wait to kind of fill it out. We have traders that, hey, if it reclaims, I'm going to go long above with a stop here and then right into the target and so forth. Okay, so again, this is an area where I expect price to reject or resist if we were to pop up into there. And at the moment, that's 4704. Now let's look for an area to the downside where I would expect support to come in. Now notice I have this trendy edge right here. This is our future trendy edge for tomorrow. Okay, so for right now, I'm going to bring this guy down to right there. So as of tonight, my liquidity chop, what I've done is use my future edge, okay? And I've used a quant pivot here. Now, how can you figure out where to put these if you don't have any indicators? Well, I'll show you one thing. You could come up here and you could measure the rally, okay, with your Fibonacci's. Let's go ahead and just uh, right here where this rally started. We're gonna go right there and we are going to find the 23.6 and that just happens to be right where my trendy edge is. And I can tell you the trendy edges are not the 23.6, but math is kind of cool and they synergistically come together. So take the rally, measure, find the 23.6, place that right there, and that's gonna be our liquidity chop. Now what about to the upside? How could you find a level up here if there's nothing there? Remember what I told you. If we go to our other bigger charts, we might find that there's a level up and to the left where I would expect resistance. Now let's zoom in really quick. This is a daily chart. We are not at all time highs and therefore I still have structure to find targets. Also have videos out there on how to find targets. I'm going to place my line right underneath that body. Okay, now that body roughly is 47.02. Now, if I come back over here, this is 47.04. So let's bring our 47.02. About right there. It doesn't have to be perfect, guys. It really doesn't, all right? So we're gonna do 47.02 by 46.97, all right? We down with that? So we're all, this is our liquidity chop area right here. Now. Now that I have that, what about targets to the upside over liquidity chop? Boom. I have this, which is going to be a quant pivot, and I have this. But please remember, I'm always looking at structure up and to the left. Where else are there targets? Let's go to the top of this body. The top of that body is around 47.23, and then we have 47.38. 23. Let's go up here. And then we have 38. Okay. Now, again, as you can see, I'm using levels. I'm not using ATR or any of that kind of business. All right. <clears throat> now, we're going to put this up here just for now. Okay. Just like that. And you can see we're popping in right into that 4702, by the way. And you can see we kind of reject off of that. And again, it might be a minor rejection, it may not. Now let's get back to what this means. All right, everybody ready for that? So what does liquidity chop mean? It just means that the idea is that traders are placing stops up here and that traders are pl placing stops down here. So the person going long is placing a stop here. The person that's going short is you know, putting their stops here. And what happens is the, bar the market is creating or taking liquidity from retail traders. Traders like you and I, all right? And I say you and I, but again, if you have some time in the seat, you're getting better and better and you're not doing the same things that all the other traders are doing. You're learning to do this stuff a little bit faster, a little bit better, and that's what I'm trying to help you out with, okay? So again, liquidity chop, the idea is that we just kind of settle and go in here, okay? Just like this, we build liquidity, and then later on, the bigger moves come. All right, either up to the upside or down to the downside, okay? Now, how far could this move up? It just kind of, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter to me, all right? 
it could move all the way to 4706 in this one two hour candle and then come all the way back down here and that's the thing time is a variable so we're on a two hour chart so yeah somebody might say well it breached that but if it comes back down and closes in here again whatever time frame that you're on you have to respect that time frame so for example if i want to stay long here off the two hour and i want to use the cloud i'm staying long baby until we close underneath this cloud plain and simple all right now let's talk about what we've done so far liquidity chop zones we have a demand zone and now we got to figure out this zone up here. Now I take things into consideration like the fact that Jerome is going to be on the mic tomorrow. All right. He's got something to say and the market knows it. Right. So I think right away volatility. Right. Anybody else thinking about volatility? I hope you are. I'm thinking that volatility kind of creeps in soon. All right, so I'm thinking the VIX, and if you go over and look at the VIX, the VIX has been crushed, and it's getting very, very close to one of my levels that I believe is very, very important. Let's just check it out real quick together. So it's at twelve dollars and seven cents, and I, you know, I made a little tweet today, and I said, "Look, volatility is coming in, so just be prepared." All right. So again, a little bit of volatility. You guys can see that today it doesn't look as bad as it was, but. Expect some volatility tomorrow. Now, if we get volatility and I got levels that I found on higher time frames right here, now I want to check, like, does it make sense that price could reject up here? Now, we're at 47.03 on this H contract, and that only gives me 35 more dollars to the upside. Okay. Is this a legit supply zone? Supply zones are where I expect price to break on down okay so let's go over here to the weekly this entire thing is a supply zone so what happens is a lot of supply and demand traders don't know this and i hope that this carries on and people learn this but once you cross over into a supply zone we're going to hold this level and we say if this then that if 46.58 holds i'm looking for 46.99 if 46.99 holds, I'm looking for 47.35. So 50% of the supply zone is 47.35 and 75% is 47.72. So what I'm going to shoot for for tomorrow is 35 and up. So let's go back over here and notice how I'm using every chart. And this is what people don't understand is that this is, a, this is an art. This is the reason why I can go out on Twitter and show you before and after and be so accurate. Not many traders can do this, right? But there's a lot more work put into it than you think. And I understand it takes a little bit of time. But if you just listen to me and you start to set your charts up and you start to look at the market a little bit differently, then all you have to do is wait for the green box and or this target to the upside. It's pretty neat. Okay. So. 47.35 and above. So you can see this is 38. All right. So I'm actually going to put my target up here for tomorrow's event. All right. So we're going to go right up there. And if you guys recall, if we go back to the weekly, we're talking about 72 over here. Okay. So if I get to 72, I mean, that's way up here, right? So let's just go up here all the way up there. And, and I get it, you know, this is getting a little ridiculous, the, these moves. <laughs> but I'm going to put 47.38 for right now. It's going to, I'm just going to leave it right there. I'm not going to put any more targets behind this 47.38 for right now. Okay. Now I would expect, do I expect us to hit this thing tomorrow? Like tonight? No, I expect maybe a move up into this area, consolidation, maybe a move back down. And then we, we kind of settle somewhere in the middle between two opposing targets. And usually that's what you guys will see is by the time that you uh, wake up or depending on how much you trade, usually we are at equilibrium bet between two opposing zones, supply and demand. All right. And then that event that's coming out is going to push price into a supply or demand level. So my big thing here is, yes, I teach you how to find these in advance. And then you as a trader, we work on how do you execute these levels when price gets there? And we got all that stuff, okay? So don't worry. All right, now that we got all this stuff in check, now what we're going to do is take this time frame and break it down. 
and I'm going to take you to a 90 minute okay so we're gonna go right here to 90 and what this does is when you break down time frames is you start to get a different picture your candles start to look different okay so remember the reason why I put this down here is because we had it inside and up formation okay going to keep doing this together and I'll tell you once I break it down and I start to see something then I'm going to point it out to you we're going to go down to one hour and while I'm doing this I'm looking for more inside and up formations like for example now we have a really nice inside and up formation right here I'm actually going to bring this level up just a tad and what I'm doing is I'm taking into consideration this inside candles wick and I'm coming across there and putting that level on there Okay. All right. And the next thing, so these are targets. Anytime I put these up, these are targets, guys. And now notice that the divergence between the cloud and price is pretty far away. So how do you stay in trades? We use this cloud right here. All right. And I'm going to keep breaking this down. And you'll notice that as we break down the time, the cloud gets closer to price. And this is how we can find comfort in staying in trades. You might be like, well, John, I'm bullish, but I'm not comfortable holding as long as the two hour cloud is intact because it's just too damn far away and I get it. So you break it down until you can see something, okay? So 30 minute, notice that we're not too far away. Price is right here at 45.95 and you're at 47.03. So it's not too bad. It's like a seven, seven point stop or so, okay? Now, Notice what's happening here. We are creating an inside and up formation. This is bullish. You can see I have a buy signal off of my um, indicators here. And again, I'd be looking for this move into 47.06, okay? Now I'm gonna keep breaking this down and I'm gonna show you why, okay? Now we're going to go to a 20 minute because we're looking for targets now. The majority of traders cannot stay in their trades long enough and they need a little bit more of a roadmap and that's exactly what I'm doing with you right now. Okay, I'm showing you how to create this roadmap because we have targets to the upside, but what about if it breaks down below this liquidity? Where are we going? Well, look at this inside and up formation. I'm gonna go right underneath that inside and up formation. Boom, so all I'm doing, if you take my crosshairs and we come across here, we are right there. And can I go ahead and ask a question? Uh, because I remember if I was supposed to be streaming on here, give me a second here. There we go. Yeah, the yellow arrows are new, second to none. Um, so those are called trendy turn signals, man. And I'm not, listen, they're absolute fire. And you can ask, we got a ton of members that are in the trendy room that use the trendy turns, they're fire, man. It, like, honestly, they're one of my favorite indicators. Um, <laughs> it, they're pretty cool. It, we did, uh, our last webinar, we did, uh, we talked about the PMZ and the trendy turns. Yeah, and I'll show you here in a few minutes. So, all right, so I have a target here, all right? But one question, can you guys see my screen pretty well? So I use OBS and I was getting complaints that it was really fuzzy. And I always thought YouTube um, auto-corrected everything, but I noticed during my setup that OBS, when they updated it, they changed all the settings, and I think that's what happened. So I was kind of curious if, um, if the quality looks okay. I mean, are we talking like 1980s, you know, here? Yeah. So we're going to come over here, all right, and we're going to keep going down. Notice that we have an inside and up formation right there, but I also have a quant pivot. So I'm just going to use this quant pivot. It makes it easy. If you don't have, okay, cool. If it, if it doesn't, if you don't have quant pivots, that's okay. You know how to identify an inside and up and inside and down formation. If not, go to my YouTube page and just type in the search inside and up. All right. All right. Awesome. Made in the USA. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. All right. So again, here we are, inside and up, inside and up. All I'm doing is going down and to the left, and I'm looking for these formations. Now, the next thing that I can do is take this entire. So I think we're going to go to 4706. I can measure from this rally to where I believe price could reject. 
and I want to find the 23 and the 38. I love this. My target right here with the quant pivot is the 38.2. And then look, I can't make this stuff up. Then I found the inside and up here. That's also the 50. Okay. So this is all very, very important for tonight's um, blueprint. And, you know, it might sound, if you're a new trader and you're like sitting there thinking, God, man, that's a lot. It really isn't. I'm just trying to go really slow with you and show you everything so that you understand what I'm putting into the quality of these charts. Okay. So again, now let's talk about the things that I'm looking at when you're in the trade. What are the things that we're looking at? So in the morning, and I have to be honest with you guys, I don't do a lot of trading at night because I'm pretty busy, right? It's Taco Tuesday. I'm usually I'm usually out at the restaurant right now with my wife and family, but um, unfortunately she has strep throat and she's not feeling well. So that means I get to hang out and, and educate even more. So uh, I'm just happy to be here and be able to share uh, what I've learned. So anyways, we are... You know, from this standpoint, it's like, well, how do I get in these trades? Well, when you wake up in the morning and say you're on Twitter or you're you're here in the room with all of us and we see this, we think, okay, we understand where the zones are coming from. We have a supply zone and we have a demand zone. Demand zones, you go long. Supply zones, you go short. Okay. Now your supply zone, let's just, let's just put a box up here so you guys understand. This would be red. Okay. Now, I don't always paint them red. And the reason, if you guys notice, I haven't been painting them red lately is because we've been busting right through supply. So I don't want this red box in front of you to scare you. I want you to understand like there's a possibility that we bust right through it. But this is typically what you'll see on my charts just like this. Okay, so again, supply and demand. And when we get there, what we teach is on smaller time frames. when we get into the zone, if you're brand new at futures trading, guys, I want you to try the micros. Try the micros and don't be scared. So basically, and when fear happens, a lot of people that trade minis, they'll be scared to death to buy in here. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to work either way, whether you use micros or minis, you know, it's still the same system. It's just that I find that people are more comfortable at first using micros. And you don't have to just trade one. You could trade like three or four of them or something like that. But the idea in these green boxes is we want to accumulate, okay? Now, there's an aggressive versus conservative, right? Aggressive, you look at the difference between the zone, right? So 84 minus the 61 right here. You get the math on that and then you say to yourself, well, that's 20 points of risk. I'm not okay with 20. So what you do is not take the aggressive approach and you scale in, but we only scale in when we see trendy turns. Now there's other things that you can use out there. Some of you guys might not even be a part of trendy and you might have a system like you're looking for something in particular. And I can give you other things that you can use to kind of help you out. So we use a five minute, okay? We use a five minute and what we're looking for is stuff just like this. And what I tell everybody is please ignore my trendy turn signals if there's not a major level. What is a major level, John? Any level that I've created or you start to create on your chart that you deem that is important and you have these signals or you have whatever signal you're looking at, and I guarantee you if you have a signal that you're using, you're probably figuring out, well, they don't always work. But what's really neat when we use the trendy turn signals like today, I can't make this up, guys. If you go back and you look at the chart that I gave you today, matter of fact, here it is, just for reference. This is what we did. All right. I went short here and I went long here. Okay. And I mean, there's so many charts that I've shown you where this looks like, it literally looks like Groundhog Day. You know, it, as I said, people get desensitized. But we wait for the green box. And what you'll learn is like, that's one of the top three things in trading. If you could just learn patience. And I love hearing it from all of our members. They're like, God, man, now I'm so patient because I understand there's no reason to speculate. Wait for your level. Wait for your indicator to go off understand your risk and then boom no 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 our, our indicators are futures stock uh forex it doesn't matter man it does not matter and again i i on it this is not a sales pitch please 
Like seriously, it's not. It's it. My thing is find out who's in our room. Come come hang out with us for a seven dollar trial, man. You know, and and see what I'm. I'm very confident you'll come in there and be like, wow, okay, this is cool. You know, and then you know you kind of you learn from the from the members. You know, my my whole thing is not talk to my members. You know, are my members happy? <laughs> That's what's important for me. All right. So again, we wait for you to come into these levels, then you take action, but it does not end there, okay? It does not end there. So we have what's called the PMZ. So these indicators, these clouds that we have are pretty robust, right? They have buy signals in them and stuff. And really at the end of the day, guys, EMA clouds, Okay, they're EMA clouds. You're more than welcome to use the same EMA clouds, 9, 13, 22, and 44. That's what I use. Not secret sauce, okay? But there is secret code in here that basically tells me when to buy, when to short, and stuff like that. But the cloud itself is pretty neat. It keeps you in a trend. How do you stay in a trend? Like, are you having trouble staying in a trade? Look at this. Can you stay above the cloud? Can you stay above the cloud? Yes or no? I mean, I had a problem today. I got my own way. That was my only downfall today is that I took, and I was positive on my future trades. Did I did well, but I just kept getting out. And I'm like, John, why are you getting out, man? And then you go back, you, you know, and you look at this stuff and you're like, Jesus, why would I get out of the trade? We're above the cloud, right? Right? I mean, you guys see that, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and I, and I tell traders all the time, like just trade from the green zone to the target. Right. And so that's what we're doing. We're identifying supply and demand. And then we have other things to help traders and that's the pre-market zone. And I put that on, on Twitter so that if anybody had not seen the webinar, rewatch it. Like, listen, Melissa's a trader here with me at simpler trader or simpler trading. Right. She has an 80% win rate over 13 months now using these, these indicators here, all right? So again, I just showed you how to do this without indicators. We identified all of this stuff by looking at structure. What you don't see when you're on Twitter, right, and you're checking out my stuff is that our traders are understanding and know how to trade the PMZ. The PMZ is solid. We go long above it, we go short below it, it is mechanical, it is sequential, it is methodical, it's everything that you need. Because my journey was listening to people in rooms give me trades and I thought I could be just like them. And the truth of the matter is trying to copy trades is a losing strategy. It really is. What if I get hit by a bus tomorrow? Are you going to know what to do? No, you need somebody that's going to teach you and who cares about your success. And I really, really do. And I need you to be able to like look at something and go, yeah, I know how to go long above this. Do you know how to go to short? And all you do is look at the risk. What are the numbers between these two numbers? And that's your risk for today. I think our risk today was five points. So every morning your risk is gonna show up right here. It's gonna tell you where to go long, where to go short. And it's pretty straightforward. Sometimes you'll get stopped out. A lot of times you won't. It just kind of depends on the day. All right. But we move forward. We rely on probabilities. And the probabilities suggest that our levels work more than they don't. Just like this. This was beautiful yesterday as well. All right. And then we had that, you know, we had that gap or whatever that kind of messed things up. But other than that, I mean, I can't make these things up, guys. You see over and over how well they work. If you're looking for mechanical, and, and a lot of you guys are members probably because I put out the post, but this is a mechanical approach to trading. And that's what I believe everybody needs. Take your emotions out of it. One thing that we really like show people is how to find these zones. And then, you know, I make I make fun. You know, I'll put stuff out on Twitter and, and I'll say something like, um, you know, let's put this back on a one hour so it doesn't look so crazy. But this is the two hour, sorry. We're gonna do this right here, right? And then I'll put I'll put something up here like Jerome zone, you know? And I mean that. 
<clears throat> and what's really neat is I've done this live many, many times on YouTube or whatever, and we'll come right into the zones. And if you do one thing tonight, okay, remember, news is a catalyst to push price into supply and demand. That's it. And as simple as that sounds, many of you will have a hard time doing that. Just concentrate on understanding what I just said. You will block the noise. You will block all the people that are trying to tell you what to do. Just concentrate on price. Find your zones. Understand the EMAs. Know how to get targets. And you are going to put yourself together a trading plan that I believe will make you the most consistent trader out there. I'm not guaranteeing you profits. I'm telling you, you'll wake up in the morning and you'll be able to trade. That's the most important thing. And you'll be able to do it by yourself. The reason why you stick around at Simpler is because you are literally trading with like-minded people. And when I say like-minded, I mean it. We're using the same stuff. We're using the same process. We got the, you know, we got all the same things that we're concentrating on. That's what's important, all right? So let's do the NASDAQ, and now I'm gonna show you how fast this is. So the next thing that I wanna do really quick, so I'm gonna take this, and I'm going, I'm going to get a target between here and here because I think it's too far away. So I'm just going to use Fibonacci's between two opposing targets, and I'm gonna come up here, and I am going to pick the 38.2, about right there doesn't have to be perfect, right there. So this is what my blueprint is going to look like for tonight. And notice how we came right back down into liquidity chop. That's what I mean. So a little bit of momentum and then you kind of come in. So we're just kind of like, you know, we're gyrating back and forth. Okay. So give me just one second and then we'll do the NASDAQ. I promise I won't take as long. But I'm going to post this on Twitter. And if you guys have a moment, please come out and, uh, you know, give it a like. And if you use these things at night, um, you know, show some support out there on Twitter, X, and um, give me some love. I appreciate you. ESF blueprint for tonight. The key is survival, right? Survival in the stock market, man. All right, so we'll put that on there, and now we'll just type in NASDAQ. Let me put this in here. Hey, hey, Tony, I see you're asking me some questions. I'm going to throw this in there really quick. And let's do the NASDAQ. All right, backslash NQ. All right, now I have not put my, again, I haven't put my stuff on here uh, in quite some time. So we are going to uh, erase some stuff. I was using the old contract. And instead of showing you how to do all the, the little things, we're just going to keep a lot of the stuff. So I'm going to bring this up here. I'm going to bring this up here. I'll show you how fast I can do this with my levels. So again, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to see this white dash line over here. This is what we call a trendy target. Those are automated as well. So I'm going to use the liquidity chop there. And then remember, I'm going to use the trendy edge there. So those are your two liquidity uh, zones. I'm going to use the top of this candle as support and where I would expect prices to bounce if we were to move down. And then I'm going to use uh, this wick right here. And then I'm going to come down and use the bottom of that inside and up formation. We're going to create a zone. Okay, and I just wanna see if I have another one and I do, I'm gonna bring it up. And it looks a lot like the ES. So, and I'll show you real quick. This is the mother candle. This is the inside candle. And this is the up candle, so we have created demand. All right, and let's go ahead and put a target on here, just like that. How many of you guys think you could do this? Seriously, how many of you guys think you could do this by yourself? Take a little practice, right? Don't worry. I, always, I often forget like <laughs> how much of a beginner I was back in the day, and some people are like, John, you're so fast, you know, and I'm like, I am? And so I apologize. All right, I'm gonna use these quant pivots up here. Same thing though, if you wanted to, you could go back. Uh, and I put all these charts out on Sundays, guys, for free. 
right on my YouTube page. So you have all the levels. So if you come over here, you guys will see. Um, we are moving up in this supply zone. Let's do this. I'm going to show you how I do this. So we're just going to take some Fibonacci's and we're going to measure this box. And then we click on the Fibonacci. We right click on it, edit properties. And then for the coefficients, we're going to come down here and we are going to make this a quarter. So 0.25. And then we already have a 50. And then right here is 0.75. just like that and we're gonna say okay and so my next target is actually 16674 okay so right here and right here so 674 and 846 674 so we were pretty close about right there and then 846 is that what I said? 846? It can't be that far away. 846, yeah. Jeez. All right. 846, 666. That's what it is. And then 846. I gotcha. So for tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to grab another one of these. And we got two targets there. This one feels a little close, but it's okay. We're going to come up just a tad. All right, and then we have those. Yep, so this is what we're going to do. This is what it's going to look like. It's kind of wide, but it's all good. Gives us another 200 points or so to the upside. So we're going to make this one red. Right there. Ooh, that doesn't look good. right there there we go now we're cooking all right now I'm going to use some Fibonacci's and yep I'm gonna bring this one up a little bit it's too far away and then we are going to use this quant pivot these are going to be kind of tight and I apologize we're gonna go right there and again, if, you, if you're just tuning in, don't worry. Go back to the beginning of this. I go over great detail of how to get all these levels um, on the NASDAQ. I'm just being kind of quick here. And this looks like what I want to have going into tomorrow. And remember, when we get to the green zone, I'll be looking for my buy signals, which are called the trendy turn signals. And uh, in the red zone, I'm not going short unless I'm getting your blue trendy turns. Oh yeah, trader lost, you went to OTA? That's what I'm talking about. So was I, man, I was a student of OTA. Congratulations, you still out there? You listen to me? Are you are you at Simpler? Or you just happen to be uh, OTA and uh, found me? And give me one second, guys. I need to call my daughter really quick. About to find out if she Hello. got in. Hey, baby, what's up? Hey, I want to tell you I got in. You got in? I did. Oh, my goodness. So are you, so we got a full ride to FSU, or what are we talking about? <laughs> well, I'm still working on the ACT um, to get my uh, score up for Bright Futures, but I'm, like, in the Florida State anyways. Babe, congratulations. I, I love you. you so much. Are we are we doing something tonight, or we'll wait until this week sometime? Uh, we should do something this week because Autumn had plans tonight with her boyfriend, but we'll have to figure something out so we can celebrate. Because I called Ashley and let her know, and she said we should celebrate. Oh, my God. I'm so happy for you, baby. I love you so much. Thank you. I literally was so relieved I started crying. I was like, thank God. <laughs> Maybe we'll cry We'll cry together when we go out, okay? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. I love you, baby. All so. right. All right. Bye-bye. Oh. Sorry, guys. So I just found out. So before I told you guys she was going to FSU, she actually got into UA, and I thought it was FSU. Well, we just found out that she got into FSU just now. So that was pretty awesome. Yeah. So so Trader Lust, so um, OTA, 
So my whole thing is, you know, for for traders who are still looking to take their supply and demand trading to the next level, I feel like I've already um, really perfected that, man. So I was a student of OTA back in the day in Colorado. Uh, really give those guys a lot of credit for the way they made me think, man. Absolutely wonderful. Um, how to think like an institution, man. That changed my entire life. And, uh, and I still preach that to today, but my spin on supply and demand is just a tad bit different and a lot easier uh, for me to uh, basically digest and teach to other traders. So, yeah, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming here. So I appreciate you. Yeah. So we are, um, this is what we're looking at for the NASDAQ. So let's just do that. These are, I mean, they're a little spread out. The NASDAQ's a little... It's it, if if you never traded futures, I mean, the Nasdaq is way different, man. You can be up or down big time, um, very quickly. It's kind of scary. I mean, you can make good money just trading the micro Nasdaqs, guys. So you don't have to be a hot shot if you're just now learning. Um, just think about that, you know. But these are my levels. This is what I'm sticking to. And uh, if any of you guys are supply and demand traders, make sure you follow me out on uh, my Twitter page because I would love to be able to converse with more and more supply and demand traders. I mean, that's what we're trying to do, right? If you don't know how to trade supply and demand, I'm here to teach you. If you're a supply and demand trader, I probably can teach you a couple things as well. So uh, anyways, I really appreciate the time you guys um, came over here and listened to me. I hope these uh, charts help you out tonight. I'll be putting this uh, NAS nasdaq one out there as well so uh again make sure you uh follow me over there it's trendy john tr3 ndyjon and uh again thanks so much guys i appreciate you have a great